Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today we're at episode 114, I think now. And this week is just going to be comic book week. I mean, if something from the movie pops up, I will definitely cover it for you guys, obviously. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to focus on comic book stuff for Venom all week. So I know some of you guys have been patient with me, waiting for some of these videos to come up. A lot of them are going to be like, you know, between three and five minutes long. And then there's going to be a couple that are like five to ten minutes long. And today we're just going to make a brief one. I don't know how long it'll be, maybe less than ten minutes. Uh, but it's actually about this issue here, Venom issue 161. Now, a while ago when this came out, you guys know I have a subscription to Venom. I get every single issue and I read them all cover to cover, including the back. Uh, the big thing I look for every month is in the back when you write a letter. I think if you write a letter to spideyoffice at marvel.com and you have to list it as okay to print, um, you can tell them what you thought of the latest issue of the book and or like what you hope will happen in the book coming up. And I've been writing for like the past six or seven months to try to get a letter in these books. So I check this every single time uh, for something and there was something that was listed here that I did read, but I don't think it registered with me and then I just forgot about it. And then someone brought up to me the other day, I had actually had two people write me, I think yesterday or the day before, uh, asking me, hey, what do you think of the, the thing about Venom being pregnant in the comic books again? And I was like, what are you talking about, Venom's pregnant? Uh, and then I went online and I saw that there was a guy who made a YouTube video about it. So I'll put a link to his video down below. I think it's RNS uh, Entertainment, something like that. He's a much bigger channel than me and he's got a lot of cool stuff he does about movies and comic books and everything. He's clearly a big Venom fan. Uh, so big shout out to that guy. He covered this uh, on his channel really well. So if you want to see his full thing, check it out down below. Uh, but uh, for me, I mean, yeah, I read this issue. I actually like this issue. Uh, I know RNS said he had some problems with the artwork. Uh, it didn't bother me too, too much. It was a little inconsistent as far as like Venom design goes. So he brings up a good point. He was very thorough in his review of the book. Uh, but um, they had some neat stuff in it too. And the biggest thing was, was this splash page right here, which you can see has, uh, you know, Jessica Drew, who's Spider-Woman, who that's who he's fighting on the cover and she gets uh, the symbiote wraps around her she knocks Eddie Brock out before the symbiote can like cover him and so now the symbiote's like free it goes to her and wraps around her face and says look you can't hurt us don't hurt Eddie don't hurt me I need Eddie something important is about to happen and she you know the symbiote shows her all these images and most of the images what they have in common is that they are other symbiotes uh, so you'll see like uh, like maniac and his symbiotes here from the Venom Inc run uh, you'll see the moment where Eddie Brock busted out of jail and then the symbiote going into uh, Cletus Cassidy's bloodstream uh, you'll see the moment where he gave the suit to Anne Weying, his wife, and she became She Venom. Uh, there's, you know, like little moments here from the comics. I think that's the moment where he pushes Peter Parker out in front of the train. Uh, and then there's the moment where he has cancer. There's the five symbiotes there from the Lethal Protector and uh, Separation Anxiety. There's Carnage. There's Hybrid. So, uh, yeah, there's it covers a lot in there, but they weren't just memories of moments when the suit spawned uh, or had, you know, a, you know, a baby or, you know, other symbiotes came up. So I didn't recognize that, the, you know, that was like maybe what it was trying to say um, was that it was trying to tell Jessica, don't hurt us because we're actually on the path of good and we want to stay on this path because we're about to have a baby and it could become, we don't want it to become another carnage. We want it to be another force of good is, is I guess the, the running theory. And the reason why people are theorizing this and why RNS made a video on it is because in the letter section, which I read all the time looking for my letters and I missed this big time where, like I said, it didn't register with me. Uh, it says, what a revelation. The Venom symbiote is about to spawn question mark. What could that mean for Eddie Brock, Spider-Man and even Venom itself? Only one way to find out, keep reading. And so I'll be honest with you, from that page, I did not get from it that uh, it was, you know, it was going to spawn again. Although there is this little hint here at the end in the last panel, which I remember seeing that and going like, well, that's interesting. That's kind of like how the little sliver came off and created carnage. And that's kind of what's happening here. A little sliver of the symbiote is running down Eddie Brock's hand as he's saying, are you keeping a secret from me? And the suit's like, no, I would never do that, Eddie. So... You know, I guess I guess the later this year we'll see a new symbiote. And I guess one of the reasons why, because a lot of times, you know, when stuff like this happens, 
it's it, you know it sometimes ties in the movies so it makes me wonder if uh if maybe in the movie they're going to create a new symbiote maybe uh you know we do see uh Riz Ahmed or somebody become a, a, a creature before Car carnage is created maybe there is some other symbiote that he fights and maybe it's not just strictly one from the comic books so uh so you know maybe it's something they just make up for the movie for eddie to fight i don't know i hope that's not the case hope they use scream or somebody you know i'd rather that than a new character created but on the off chance that happens, maybe they want the comic book to have that uh, character, you know, version of that character in the comic books. So that's a potential, you know, outcome is that maybe they're doing this because they're setting up a big story. Uh, Nativity, which is part one, it's issue 164, comes out tomorrow um, uh, in comic stores, Venom 164, and it's called the Nativity part one of two. And Tangled Webs, which is this issue, uh, part one and two of Nativity, which comes out this month in April, those will all tie into a story that's coming out later this fall that will you know, deal with the ramifications of this and this secret that the symbiote is hiding from Eddie. So it makes me wonder if Mike Acosta, who's writing this, if he's gonna come back later and write like a mini series, kind of how Venomized is or, you know, or Edge of Venomverse or those things, like if he's gonna come out and do a mini series later to wrap up his story, because his story is not gonna get a true ending. It's gonna lead into what Donny Cates is doing. And Donny Cates sounds like he's going in a different direction with Venom. He has this like ancient evil thing from a thousand years ago and it's only Venom can protect uh, New York City from it, and none of the other street-level characters are around, and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s missing. So uh, it sounds like he has his own plan for Venom in that book, which makes me wonder if Mike Costa is just going to set it up here and then pay it off maybe in a miniseries later. Or maybe Donny Cates will cover it. I don't know. But I, it's kind of interesting. But it's weird to me because it just shows like i'm kind of i'll be happy kind of when mike acosta leave or mike costa leaves the book it's not that he's a terrible terrible writer but i don't think he's doing a good job on venom and most for the most part i didn't like venom ink that much i think him and dan slot kind of phoned in that book uh i you know i didn't like this that much although this single issue is probably my favorite besides the um the story where you know venom fights craven the hunter uh that one like the new lethal protector blood in the water story that one i kind of like the most out of all the mike costa venom stuff so far and that's probably just because i like craven the hunter and i think that's a good match for for venom there uh but for this like you know it, it just if this was supposed to tell us hey the symbiote's having a baby and then having that little sneak at the end it's it's subtle which is fine like i like subtle things i like hinting at things to do you know to pay it off but then don't in your letters column say what it is then don't, don't be the opposite of subtle here if this is supposed to be a subtle buildup so i don't i didn't like that clash there when it goes to like so oh, subtle interesting what's going on because i was thinking the secret might be something else tied to the movie in a way where in the movie Anne weighing is alive obviously in the movie but she's not in the comics and i thought maybe when she died back in like amazing spider-man 18 or 19 i think it was like volume 2 18 or 19 uh she died by jumping out of a window and killing herself but spider-man didn't see it happen uh, only Venom saw it happen. There were some other bystanders around, but for the most part, it was just Eddie that saw it. And then a couple issues later, when Eddie was trying to kill Spider-Man, he's like, why are you doing this? And he goes, because you made my my wife, when we battled, she committed suicide because we battled. And Spider-Man was like, oh man, I had no idea, I'm sorry. And then you never get any payoff to that. Like, Spider-Man never goes to see her, go to her you know, grave site to say, I'm sorry. Like, you know, Spider-Man's like a guilt-ridden character, and he never once dealt with Anne Wang's death at all. And, uh, and Eddie Brock kind of brushed it over too. After she was gone, he went to her gravesite one time and then that was it. He kind of moved on too. And so I thought maybe it would be neat if the symbiote was hiding the fact that maybe she's still alive from Eddie. Maybe she, the symbiote saw that, you know, it got jealous. Like, oh, Eddie's still in love with her. He tried to get back with her and then she killed herself. And I thought, oh, that would be far more interesting if the symbiote somehow clouded his memories to make it make him think he saw her die and then maybe she you know survived somehow or maybe she didn't jump out of a window and she's under witness protection somewhere and she's trying to live a normal life and i thought that would be a far more interesting story because the one thing we talk about all the time is every time a writer comes on venom they only know how to write three stories and most of them the most of those three are still similar anyway it's you know venom and eddie brock aren't connected to each other so they're you know like separation anxiety or he or the, one of them wants to get away from the other one uh so it's either that story or it's one where the symbiote spawns like a baby like carnage or you know carnage spawns toxin or you know whatever it's always like one of those kind of stories or it's one where other people in the marvel universe get symbiotes or he shares a symbiote with someone else temporarily whether it be you know punisher for a moment to save his life or Anne weighing or whatever and it seems like those are the only three things that ever get done with venom and as a, a longtime venom fan who's read all the comics 
it gets boring. You know, like it, you kind of you kind of even though you don't like stories like The Hunger and License to Kill, those aren't very well written stories. But the fact that he's like a government agent for like five issues is kind of neat because it's different from you know the other stuff we get. And so I was kind of hoping that you know they would go in a different direction and maybe have the symbiote have a real secret. You know, hey, your wife's still alive, and I've been keeping it from you because I was afraid you were gonna. You know, she, you were going to fall in love with her again and she was going to make you get rid of the symbiote and get rid of me and I don't want to be rejected again. To me, that's a 10 times more interesting, uh, you know, and dramatic storyline to tell than than I'm having another baby. So as far as what I think of this, uh, you know, the issue itself was fine. I like the issue. But if it's really setting up another baby for Venom, uh, I'm not excited at all. And I, I don't know if I will be. If the book comes out and it turns out to be great, you know, I'll gladly put my foot in my mouth at the time. But for now, I am not uh, excited for a possible another symbiote. Uh, if other symbiotes come, I'd rather it be from the planet Clintar attacking or another symbiote getting banished from Clintar like the, like Eddie's suit did and ending up on Battleworld or somewhere else. Like I'd rather a totally different story told uh, than the ones we just keep getting. It's just it's it's like regurgitated stuff over and over and over and I'm not super excited about it but I wanted to bring it to you guys attention because someone has been you know people have been asking me to make a video on it but like I said RNS he did a really great job so make sure you check out his video too and thank you guys for you know making me talk about this issue finally because I've been wanting to talk about it since we read it and theorized what the what the uh, you know secret might be but now that we know the secret is, looks like it's going to be another baby uh, I'm not very excited for it so those are just my two cents on it but I want to know what you think so let me know down in the comments below and uh, in the next couple issues we're going to be talking about about uh, Edge of Venomverse and uh, we have Venomverse we're gonna do review of one episode on here one episode on here and then I'm gonna do Poison X will be another series we do and then I'm gonna probably make like two or three minute videos on each one of these uh, that are currently in your comic store for one dollar it's a bunch of Venom books focusing on key moments of his history and it kind of details from the beginning of Spider-Man with the black suit all the way up to like current day and there's a couple more issues coming out tomorrow that I'll get but for now I'll probably record these seven uh, episodes for you guys and just start pumping them out this weekend so you know stay tuned for that thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe let me know what you think down in the comments below of all this and I'll see you in the future peace